check the life of a man that we are using as a case study this month. It's called Job. Let's check his life. Job, the book of Job, chapter number one. And I will go to where I'm going today. The book of Job, chapter number one. Job chapter number one. I want all of you that want to be prosperous. I want you to listen to me. My wife was asking me a question the other day, and I said, what is the balance? And I thank God for asking that question. He said, Pastor, you preach in the church that we should just be submitted to God and let God have his way and whatever. And then you got to Hovo's house, you were talking that anybody who does not have ambition, God cannot do anything with him. And I said, what is the balance? I said, very good. Even as I'm talking to you right now, one major reason why a lot of people will not prosper is because in the first place they are ambitionless. I'm, I'm bringing balance together. God even prefers somebody who is he's running here, God is catching him, he's running here, he's catching, than somebody who stays like this, like a dummy. Have you forgotten the story of the prodigal son? Your face lit up. <laughs> God wants you to be ambitious. When God says submit, what will you submit? Will you submit emptiness? Some mission means you have a mission. <laughs> there are things that are troubling. There are things I want to accomplish in this life. You think I'm a dummy just looking for somewhere. There are things I want to accomplish in this life. I don't want answer and Ebenezer to point to me and say, he preached the gospel, but we don't like him. Not me and you. The Bible says a good man lives an inheritance for his children, children. David, all of them that are my friends in the Bible, they, are, they, are, they have money. They're very good people. That, the reason why we are teaching this thing, we are finding the truth about this thing, is because we need the money. Well, <laughs> what do you think? The other day, even this spiritual man, the other day, uh, I was asking him, I said, so what is, maybe about three weeks ago, he said, what is uh, going on with you now? What is he say? One of the things he said is that uh, you need finances in your life. <laughs> I said, spirit is looking for finances. <laughs> I, I, I said, look, our spirit is looking for... The reason why I'm teaching this thing is that I don't want anybody poor. What do you think? Let's all listen very well. <laughs> I don't... I don't know if that, that come around me, you know that I don't joke. Poverty is not my friend. It's, 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 as soon as I got born again, I began to preach whatever, whatever. The first thing I put my eyes to know what, how it works was prosperity. So they used to call me apostle of prosperity because every part of the Bible that deals with money and prosperity, I know it. That's I serve the Lord thy God, is a bled thy bread and thy water, and thy, <laughs> say, take away sickness from the midst of thee. Matthew 6, 33 is my say. The way I was quoting it that time, he said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That one is low key. Oh, a lot of things. So I added, that's what I follow me. Say, increase the following, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so you understand somebody who does not have anything is going, he does not even understand what we are talking about prosperity God let not this God cannot prosper a fissionless and business person he cannot somebody will just say oh, oh you say I'm fine what are you doing now I'm just in church I just love the Lord I said, so after that one, say, I just love the Lord. I like to stay in his temple, like Solomon said. I like to see the four words of Sion. <laughs> I would rather dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life than be in the temple. <laughs> I said, so after dwelling in the temple of the Lord, what else do you want to do? He said, I don't know, Pastor. I don't know where life is going. I don't know where destiny is going. But I just stay here. Even God is not going to do anything. Do you remember the story, listen, of the prodigal son and his brother? Who do you think I like the best between the two of them? You think it's the older brother? Quite not me. The only problem with the prodigal son is that he did not know when to ask, how to ask, and what to use things for. He could have asked, actually asked the father. He would, he don't, you don't have to ask. How can you be asking your father that has not died to give you the person of good that falls to you? You want to kill him. It's not good. You are telling him you are going to die. Uh -uh. How can you tell him and be like that? No, you just say, dad, 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 dad. We need to extend this ministry. <laughs> say, this ministry is not only good in Galway, it's because what is good for Greece is good for you, <laughs> for Uganda. <laughs> what is good for goods is good for... 
Ganda. You understand what I'm saying? So we can actually extend this ministry. So you see, Pastor, some of the money we have been saving, I have an idea. He said, what is the idea? We're going to start this ministry in Cork. I have it, an auditorium we can buy. Are you listening to I have an auditorium we can buy? That's what he was supposed to say. That, Dad, give me some money. I want to extend this. Your ministry. But the ministry you extend to Cork, do you think your dad is still going to be in charge? No, you are in charge. But his son was greed. And not be, he was not well advised. That's why I say, give me the person of good affairs to me. And I like, God likes adventurous spirit. Hello? 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 Where there is no motion, there can be movement. You think, answer and Ebenezer, we just grow up and then they're 22. And I ask, ah, hello guys. So what's going on? He said, no, we just like the keyboard we're playing in the church. I ask, I say, all of these people, their daughters that are coming around that you're teaching keyboard, does the Holy Spirit move in your heart towards anybody? He said, no, that's not what we're talking about. I say, evil spirit, get back. <laughs> get, 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 get behind me. Evil spirit that will make somebody to be 40 years old in my house <laughs> without having. He said, evil spirit. I said, begin to pray. <laughs> As a matter of fact, now if you will start. I know my wife will come to me and say, he fed me. <laughs> Let them wait for the time of the Lord. I say, that I remember now, this is the... <laughs> this, this is God. I say, my brother, begin to pray, 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 pray. You see, uh, any name they call, you say, so pray, pray, begin to pray, pray. Uh, but say, they say, no, but that, we just want to be following you around. They say, evil spirit, <laughs> we we'll not follow you guys. God wants people to have an aim. He's a God of vision. He's a God of purpose. Is a God of actions. You need to listen to me. But the balance is what human beings don't know. There is nobody that God ever prospered in this life who never desires to be prosperous. He won't. Somebody said, Solomon was not asking for money, was not asking. First of all, Solomon said, wisdom is good with an inheritance. Before he became king, his father David put money down. So money was not his problem. Number two, he knew that if he had wisdom, he would gain all the money in the hand of everybody. <laughs> what do you think? That's why God now preempted him. Say, I'll give you wisdom. I know you are needing wisdom money also. <laughs> you can never be given what you do not desire unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we think and ask according to the power that is talking to us. I'm not teaching us to be indolent. I'm not teaching us to be visionless. I'm not teaching us to be ambitionless. That's not true. That's not Christianity. Jesus said, occupy till I come. I'm not teaching you not to, not to go for, for the best of jobs or the best of contracts. As a matter of fact, let me tell you this truth. I like things looking good around me. Whether my house or my office or whatever. I like things look as soon as I see something that is not good. I'm picking if I enter the house right now. If you have, follow me to enter the house, the children have done so many things. I'm picking this, I'm picking this. I say, Oh, then why are these things like this? Put I like things organized around me and looking good. And I like people looking good. All this we want to do holiness. Um, you know, I'm extremely against people just dressing and but I like people looking good, smelling well. I'm the one who will tell you your perfume is uh, <sighs> Because when they were to bury Jesus, they put perfume. So that means it's not sin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My wife is coming out of the house. I ask, did you take perfume? He said, quite so. <laughs> you understand? The children have put perfume. Even as they are going to school, I say, pray, pray. I put. <laughs> I don't want them to say, I don't even know how they smell. Then I want them to smell rich. I want them to smell good. God wants it. But the problem of man is that as soon as he hears something, he said, turn somewhere else. Instead of turning his head and say, God, how does this operate? <coughs> why wouldn't God want somebody to have a big church? Why would you want them to have 10 people's church? The reason why God would want them to have 10 people's church is that they don't have capacity for 1,000. They have capacity for just 10. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, have I lost you? Have I lost you? The reason why God will, because God now said, with the capacity of this man, if he has more than 10, he's going to be proud. <laughs> there is no capacity. God wants things big. From the 
beginning, he blessed man, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, overtake, have dominion. He told them, he said, take over everywhere. What do you think? Those are the first words that came from the mouth of God. But only that God has his own way. He wants you to have a plan, you and your wife. My head calculate. Even for some of you young couples here, my head calculate. The husband is working a job of 32,000 euro. The wife is working a job of 32,000 euro. My wife had just calculated that's 64. And you don't have children. You don't have anything. Guys, can you plan life because you are now, based on Nigerian value, you are millionaires. <laughs> can you just glide in this glory of millionaire? <laughs> and just plan life. Find a fine car. Drive good car. Don't always be saying, Pastor, come and pick me. It's not, it doesn't sound normal at the time in life. From the moment you are 21, can you get driver's license? Can you try? Can you just let God know that I buy this car on top of your neck? <laughs> For the car. <laughs> I remember one time, <laughs> let me say this. I remember one time, you know, let me use the just an example. <laughs> he went to buy a bicycle. I said, I said, you lost every gear. <laughs> I just, I said, you have just lost every gear. I said, there is no girl that will see you on bicycle that will just consider you for anything. I said, my brother, <laughs> throw away your bicycles. I'm just, I'm just, I said, scooter still covers your shape because they will think you are just having life, having fun. Scooter, that one, ring, 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 ring. It still covers, but you're not driving by. <laughs> I said, my brother, that is a major pro, that's a major, there is no girl that sees our future with a bicyclist. <laughs> oh, guys, am I talking? Yes. You're not answering me, am I talking? Are you going to sit like this so that it can be driving you? <laughs> Bro, Baxter, are you with us here? You are just sitting down as an executive. If you're with us, I want to know. If you're with us, I want to know. I want to know. Because we laugh, you don't laugh. Jesus said we play uh, morning dance, you drink dance. We play. <laughs> let us know if you're here with us. And if you're not here, let us know also so that we know what to do. I said, you buy a car. From that moment, the eyes of the guy begin to say, ah, there is a destiny here. As much as it is the will of God that you should marry, the will of God also has eyes and feelings. Hello? The will of God has what? Uh, that's the reason why as soon as any one of you comes to the church now with this new water, you feel like it is more church than before. You just feel like it's more church now than before. Everybody, they, who doesn't want to come on the altar now? <laughs> you understand? God wants good things. Say it out loud. Say, God wants good things for me. Say, amen. amen. Say, amen. amen. So don't go and say, any, uh, Pastor has taught us that uh, no matter what we study, we should just, you know, be the Lord and just be like this. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. God has plan of prosperity, but he has his, his way is different from your way. I was telling my wife, you, I said many of you people that you came out of the college together, they've been working in other places. Some of them have become IRAC officers in Metronix and other places. I said, so if it is post-doctoral you want to do, it start from 40,000. I, I beg you. <laughs> Anything that does not, I tell them, that we have suffered enough, me and the <laughs> Wait. <laughs> and negotiation is very important because Bishop Waleke taught us that in life, you do not get what you deserve. You get what you bargain for in life. You can bargain salary. Hello? Don't say God doesn't need it. Having food and remain, let us be content. Are you, are you okay? <laughs> First of all, bring it. God will, I will tell you what to do with it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? God wants you living good and living great. He preaches the gospel on its own. Say after me. Say, God wants me. Please, can you talk to me? If you need it, a hitter is there. Can you, don't be cold. Say, God wants me. Living good and living great, he preaches the gospel. Amen. Amen. 